the episode doesn't start until we hear the theme. That's true. I well, can right keep now. you here forever. It is kind of a purgatory. I would leave. <laughs> yeah, there is a door right behind you. There is, yeah, there is. We don't know if it's locked though. You could just. It's well, it's locked from not from this side. I can open it. Oh, that's not what I thought you yeah, meant. Not, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. You're like, no, no, it's I'm locked from the other. Yeah, locked from the other. Side. Yeah. So you can't get out. Can't get I can't get out. Locked. It's locked from the other side. Okay. The other side is locked. All right. Which I, I oh I guess you're right. Yeah, that would mean it's locked from the other <laughs> side. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. No, I can get out. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride of Baghdad, everybody. <laughs> everybody welcome to crying in the book club the hit new podcast where three emotional friends talk about comic books that make them emotional and the host talks kind of syncopated don't worry that's not gonna not gonna keep that do going. they <laughs> is that a thing we're, we've been doing you know what we're early on uh we can we can change things up um who even knows that the hosts are locked in right now we're we're, we're all we're all auditioning for our for our jobs here uh, hi, I'm Alex, hosting this week's episode, uh, and the voice you heard was that of Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing pretty good. How are you? You know what? It's 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 a great day. It's a great celebration, uh, celebrational month. Uh, they tie together, but it's good. It's good, and I'm always happy to be you know talking to you, Emily, and talking to our good friend with the long hair and the cute face, Mr. Jean Luc Bacquel. What, what what is celebrated in July? In July, well, June, I guess. Well, no, we're recording this in December, right? That's yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, we're just it's just about to be Christmas. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit behind the scenes uh, movie, movie podcasting making. Hi, Sean, look how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to talk about Playboy's uh, top one of Playboy's top novels of 2006. Oh my also, God, really? IGN. <laughs> IGN's comic book of the year for 2006. So that's actually wow. how we decided the comics we're talking about. We looked at what IGN said was their comic book of the year. Yeah, and that's going to be our theme. We're not going to necessarily do them in order, but no, it's no. going to be our theme. I think we're going to do Bat- Scott Snyder's Batman for the next four episodes. Actually, cause... oh, we at least it's a seminal, <laughs> seminal piece of bullet to the head. Nice, nice, uh, nice, nice action there, Emily. Uh, but actually, this week, we're not talking about Scott Snyder's Batman. Um, we are talking about IGN's Book of the Year 2006. It's not a joke. It's the Pride of Baghdad. So, very exciting. Is that um, a big parade? Lots of floats? Uh, yeah, lots yeah, of flags. Was, lots of various flags. Colors. L- l- lots of flags. Flags that you're like, maybe that flag shouldn't be there. But some, it is. You know, that's so. a booth selling some stuff. Uh, yeah. Wildlife. Yeah. Animals. Some flags that show up on the news that uh, the news says has uh, symbols of a terrorist organization, and it turns out they're butt plugs. Like any good Wait, parade celebration. Is, is that yeah. happening? Is that a pride <laughs> oh, thing? I am ma- well, I'm making a very specific reference, but I will uh, I will have to find the, the news story because okay. I do remember this happening. But if, if this is your first time stopping by the, uh, you know, the book club where we cry in, or the club where we read books in. Either way, pick your poison. Uh, each episode, we pick a book from the history of the medium to review and discuss, and hopefully, hopefully, have some fun with it along the way. And I've already had fun with this. Is this a fun book? No. This is this is not a fun I book. I had fun with it. There's fun moments. It's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> but this episode, I, I did get to pick, and I chose the seminal Brian K. Vaughn piece, Why the Last Man? Um, really good. Not again. Really good stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's even more uh, real in the year 2022. It just really, really hits it. Um, yeah, it's a no, shame that kidding. the TV sh- the TV show couldn't. No, no. But we are talking about the Pride of Baghdad, a critically acclaimed graphic novel about a pride of lions from the Baghdad. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, I'm was... looking at this picture. Why would you? So, the Emily sent me the picture of the dildos on a. <laughs> 
on a flag. And it is just the ISIS flag, but with dildos in the center instead of the, the Arabic writing. Why would you do that? I don't know. Why, <laughs> I don't know. Why would you do that? I have no Dude. idea. I, I don't know. Yeah, Emily, why did you specifically um, put Why'd up, you put do that? Why? Uh, you know, I was just having a laugh. I was uh, gonna have a cheeky Nando with the boys, because this took place in London. Um, oh, of course it did. Of course it did. Actually, that, that does make... yeah One of two countries more racist than America. Yeah, and uh, this book, you know, written by an American, Mr. Brian K. Vaughn. He could be British, who knows? And he's art American. by... I think art he's by, Canadian, uh, actually, isn't he? No uh, I know. I know. Nico Henrichen is Canadian. I don't know about Brian Kavan. I, I I lay no claim to Brian. Okay. Yeah. He he's he is American. He's American. I you know, I'd like. He just wrote that it. comic about Canada invading the U.S. a few years ago. So I wondered if he was maybe. Yeah. The the artist on that was Canadian. Canadian. He was American. That was the whole. Uh, you know. You get the best okay, from gotcha. both worlds. Okay. okay, okay. I see. Um, but Pride of Baghdad. A little bit of a little bit of background, if you will. Um, it was actually released as a single volume, so it was released as a trade, and it was in a bunch of issues. Um, which reading it, that does make sense because there doesn't feel like there's a point where the story like stops or there's like a cliffhanger. It does just feel like this. This would have read kind of weird if it had been over the course of like several months. If this book had had like what four issues, and each one of them had had to end on some kind of like reveal or cliffhanger, it was a dream the whole time. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that probably wouldn't have done it many favors. No. Yeah, and Brian K. Vaughn, in his words, I know we summed it up nicely, but he wanted readers to experience the suddenness which these animals' lives were changed and that worked much better in a story that could be read in one sitting. I agree. The learning curve for writing a 136-page self-contained novel was steep, but I'm thrilled with how it turned out. So he likes his work. Good for him. Good for him. We'll find out if we like it <laughs> soon. But uh, yeah, this was it came out in 2006, which was around the sort of I would call it the Vertical Comics second boom. It was just after the 10th anniversary, a couple of years after that. Uh, but this is the time where we got stuff like 100 Bullets, Why the Last Man, Fables, where, where it, you know, at that time, it was really like the image comics we know today was Vertigo. And it was like putting out this cool creator-owned content that was, you know, pushing boundaries in many ways. Well, not, not creator-owned, but... No, well, DC Comics owned. Creator-driven, you know. maybe? Yeah, but more, yeah, more yeah, 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 yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm wondering if if it was. I don't. I don't really know the history of Vertigo. Whether there was a better split for creators or anything, or if it was the same same idea. Because I know some of those writers have have retained rights for stuff. Yeah, some people have retained rights from Vertigo stuff. That's, I think, more of a recent thing. Um, but I know that like, with like Sandman was a Vertigo book for a lot of its run, and yeah, that was something that. Uh, I mean, Neil Gaiman kind of got screwed out of the Sandman rights the same way that like Alan Moore and Dave <laughs> Gibbons did Watchmen. So if I, 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 I'm not familiar enough to say one way or another, but yeah, like your, yeah. your point is your point is correct. Though. I imagine yeah. it's more of just like a branding thing. It's like when uh, Disney didn't want like when there were films that Disney was supposed to release that didn't fit like the disney brand they would release them under touchstone well yeah so that's basically a vertigo i mean it's like you know if you want more adult oriented yeah. stuff yeah like tights and, and capes and yeah tights and yeah and most of it was just not superhero stuff like yeah. 100 bullets wide last man Fable. except it was because like hell well i guess hellblazer and swamp thing and and those characters weren't really considered superheroes yeah. at that yeah, time yeah i mean but, but but it was the mature label but yeah it was the more mature yeah. label before we got dc black label Ooh. which is way better <laughs> Way better. Batman's penis. But uh, Pride of Baghdad is based on a true story. It's been Forrest zero Gay- episodes since we mentioned <laughs> Batman's penis. <laughs> yeah, and we're not... We're, that's that, that's going to be the longest to go without mentioning it, so... Ready for that. <laughs> uh, but this story is actually based on a true story of four escaped lions from the Baghdad Zoo. Um, I had never on, heard of this before. Yeah. yeah. And so for now on, it's, it's spoiler warning. We're going to do a bit of a plot summary, go through it, and then, you know, really dive in. But, uh, the Pride of Baghdad follows the journey of four lions from the Baghdad Zoo during the 2003 U.S.-led invasion of, of Baghdad. Um, so these four lions are Safa, an old lioness who's blinded one eye, has a torn ear, and has become accustomed to captivity in the zoo. Zil, the timid alpha male of the Pride, who longs to see the beauty of a horizon in his lifetime once again. Uh, Noor, a young lioness and mother who longs for freedom for the zoo, and is Zil's current mate. And Ali, uh, who's Noor's young cub. And so in the wake of a U.S. bombing run, they escape from the Baghdad Zoo, and they end up roaming the surrounding jungle, and soon after, the streets trying to survive. 
Uh, there's a flashback scene in which we learn that Sapphire is raped by a lion named Buck and his brothers. Did with, not uh, expect lion rape within the first 20 pages of this book. No, no. Yeah, when you sent that message, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe that should have been something, too. I don't know. <laughs> Warn or, or prep, but it's, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely That's well, because... Be- I had scrubbed that completely from my memory. I remember, like, the last ten pages of this book, like, panel for panel. Yeah. And when Emily sent that message over, I was like, I don't remember that happening. Oh, but he does it. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and, it's, the only, it's the only flashback in the book, and it's, uh, you know, yeah. a graphic lion rape scene. So um, We'll get into what that scene is actually about in a little bit. This oh, yeah. book, oh, yeah. can I say, this book was so much hornier than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I thought I was getting into when I learned the premise of this book. No, no. And, no. you know, a lot of this book is... is I mean, and just... it's not like a horny book as a whole. No. Just, I expected, like, no horny, and then there was, like, at least a significant amount of horny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll talk about the horny in a sec. But So, while searching for food as they're out of the zoo... Um, the lions split up with Ali and Zil chasing a herd of horses, hoping to turn them into food and Safa and Noor exploring a palace. Um, and in this palace, they come across a chained up dying lion named Rashid. And Noor claims that the humans did this to him. But Safa retorts by saying that while humans kept them captive, they were not the torturers. Uh, Noor responds by saying that no matter what, those that would hold them captive are always tyrants. And if they were, had remained in captivity, sooner or later, they would have ended up like Rashid. So... Uh, no subtext there. Doesn't mean anything else at all. No, no, no deeper meaning. Uh, but they're then attacked by a massive black bear named F- Fahir, who together with the returning Zil, they manage to incapacitate. So they end up taking him down, and the bear begs the lions to kill him, and Zil refuses, leaving him to die slowly in agony. Um, very fun book. And then Ali, you know, leads the pride to the top of a shell building where they discover a gorgeous horizon with the sun setting or rising. I'm not sure um, which one it is, but it's, you know, sun setting over Baghdad and they're taking in the beauty and it's, it feels like, you know, they've made it to the end of their journey. And then you hear a gunshot and the four lions are shot by U.S. soldiers. Well, they have um, made it to the end of their journey. They did make it to the end of the journey. And the last <laughs> words spoken in this book, uh, there, there's a bit of text after it, are the soldiers calling the dead lions free. And uh, that is the pride of Baghdad. So, Right off the bat, uh, I'll start with start with Emily. Did you, did you like this book? Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm not as like, I'm not like gung ho on that. Yeah, but like, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was very interesting. I I think it's um, an an interesting little parable for uh like a modern event and there were things about it that I didn't really get until I read that afterward, which is kind of how it usually goes with me in fables. I'm not really that smart a lot of the time. So some of this stuff kind of like, I look at it and like, I know this is supposed to mean something, but uh, so reading the, the supplementary materials at the back of the volume what does the afterward say? I've I've never read it. Oh, I mean, like, there's just like a breakdown of like, uh, there's like a lot of the planning materials, basically. So oh, okay. it kind of just like explains like what every character is supposed to represent and like why, and yeah. it shows. Yeah. Uh, you can see like the the initial character descriptions that and, and like with their the the these characters the lion characters all had different names to begin with and like after uh basically doing like what i would describe as like sensitivity consultation uh bkb went and and changed the names to be like more appropriate to like african lions uh and changed some stuff about like different characters uh like outlooks to sort of be truer to uh like the reality of what was going on for a lot of people and uh just sort of it basically just sort of explains everything like yeah i was gonna say i i I would be curious to go back and read that now because i it would be interesting to know how intentional some of the stuff in this is yeah i guess it'll Uh, be interesting hearing what you have to say without uh you knowing all yeah. of that. I can actually, I'll pull that up on my phone so that I can have that handy to reference while we're talking. 
talking. I want to know, uh, John Luke, you, I, I mean, I did political science in college, but you did international relations. So this is a little more in your wheelhouse. I'm curious as to what you think about this book. Yeah. Well, I, I, so I, I did. I, I was, um, I, I, I've liked it on previous reads. On this one, it's been years since I read it, but I was pretty down on it for like most of it right up until the end. Uh, when I felt like thematically everything kind of clicked mm-hmm. um, in like the last 10 pages. Um, I mean, it's a gorgeous book. Like Nico Hendrickson does it like, it doesn't have a style that's, you know, super unique or anything. Um, especially like with regards to like Vertigo comics in this era, but it looks really beautiful. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of really stunning like, especially early on in the zoo like shots of the wildlife and uh there's this there's a scene where they run into a turtle on the on the brink on the banks of a river um and the turtle sort of i I guess the book does have one other flashback because the turtle flashes back to the uh 91 uh iraq invasion of kuwait and the burning of the oil fields Mm -hmm. on the way out um where the iraqi army like set fire to uh the entirety of like kuwait's oil production apparatus and which resulted in like the the persian gulf being polluted for up to up to now honestly um and that like sort of there's this panel of like all the turtles family like drowning in the in the oil and that is a really like wrenching panel i think riveting panel i think and henderson does such a great job like capturing the sort of despair and hopelessness of it in in that moment (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's I, like the art wise, I think it's virtually like unassailable. I think it's a really gorgeous book. Um, I, I'm not as high on it as I used to be though. Like I, I used to, I frequently like cited pride of Baghdad as like among my favorite BKV works. Um, like up, th- like basically the only thing that he wrote pre 2010 that I would say is like even, remotely close in quality to his like more recent output um i don't know that i still feel that way (laughs) after this read but um i I, like i said i think it comes together really well with uh, the way that it ends and i can get into that more but i I don't want to take you know we can we'll get there yeah we got a lot we got a lot of runtime alex what about you so i uh i feel somewhat similar to john i think i'm a bit higher on it overall uh, but I felt that it was like I wasn't sure what I thought about the book until I got to the last like three four pages where you you know you, you get some real you know basically the the, the heart wrenching stuff at the end where, where the lions are killed um, and all that like I I, I think throw it in my favorite was, part is when the main characters died oh yeah with the oh man that oh, that that really that, shocked me though I gotta be real like yeah. I guess I should have like seen it coming but like oof. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it coming, it, but it kind of made sense. And I, you, you, like when I was reading it, I wasn't keeping track to how many pages were left. But like, hey, it's not going to be a happy ending with the lions. Like, oh, yeah. now we're now we're gonna hang out in, in, in the city. It's going to be all good. Um, a happy ending would be sort of disingenuous for something like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. I think. I think it falls into some of the trappings that Brian K. Vaughn's stuff in Why the Last Man does in terms of just like to, his his writing style back back in that time and it, where he seems very progressive and then like progressive at the time but not necessarily you know you look at it in 2022 and you're like oh i don't know man i don't i, I don't really know but i think i think it ties well enough at the end that i think it is among my favorite things of his work but um, not that i think about it i haven't really read that much bkv other than like saga why the last man i read a swamp thing run but like i don't know it's it's like a handful of stuff and i'd put this Drew paper girls runaways first couple of trades i did oh, okay okay it's going down the list a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> you know good stuff but yeah overall uh overall i uh i quite enjoyed it um yeah and so you john like you said you read it before what was your yeah. experience with it where, where where it was a time where you were like this is you know seminal bkb this is really how, how, how holds up yeah i mean i i read it like i don't know maybe 2013 or something like that um uh, like scott snyder's was... uh, batman run was in full swing yeah exactly <laughs> yeah we called it the era of scott snyder's batman run that was what that was like 
towards the end of zero year probably or like middle of zero uh, that might have been death of the death of the fan the death of the family stuff no it was a- no I, it was after death of the family i remember because i i used to read comics at my live my local library in the summer yeah. and i remember i had bought an issue of zero year before i went to the library and read I'm sorry. a bunch of comics that same summer so it must have been when when zero year was coming out but that's you know totally uh, beside the point. Yeah, no, I, I read it when I was in high school and I thought it was a really, uh, I, I thought that it, at the time that it was a really sort of compelling angle to take on the um, U.S. invasion of Iraq. And some, par- some parts of that I still agree with. I, I, I think it's less compelling now, but I think that it's a, I still think that it's like, given the time period it came out in, I mean, it came out like right during the surge when the U.S., you know, deployed another massive wave of troops to deal with the Iraqi insurgency and sort of shut down like the emerging Iraqi civil war. So it was like right in the absolute midst of like gung ho pro, uh, yeah, sentiment. You can see that in the, the, uh, like planning materials where like BKB essentially has to like several times be like, I'm not writing this to be anti-American, you guys. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the point that I was going to make is that it it seems like to me like you, he he chose this story because it's the kind of story that you can tell without coming across as you know being anti-American. Because you have to remember, like this is contemporary with like Holy Terror and like you know the absolute pinnacle of like anti-Arab racism in the United States. Uh, like you couldn't get away with like. The, a, a big critique, I think, that is a reasonable critique of this is like, oh, you're telling an Iraq war story and it's not about, like, the people that are getting, you know, violently massacred by, by U.S. soldiers. But it, you also have to take into account that in 2006, you couldn't necessarily, like, if, you, if Brian K. Vaughan told that, like, told this same story, but the four lions were four humans that had their bom- their house carpet bombed. Yep. And were shot dead by U.S. soldiers at the end, which, by the way, is a thing that happened both during the invasion and the surge. Like we should be very clear yeah, about this. Sure. Like he would have been run out of the comics industry. You, like, yeah, he would have never written. He would a comic not have a again. career right mm-hmm. now. Um, yeah, which, like I, I, and I fully believe that. And that's not to that's not to say that like we, it's not worth critiquing the yeah. The like, to, it's it's to a tell valid story animals, critique. but you have to put yeah. you have to put the you still have to put it in in yeah. that context and in that context and. When I was younger, I thought I, that's not the lens that I came at it from when I was younger. When I was younger, sure. I just thought like, oh, this is like, you know, kind of a heart wrenching story. Very clearly, the lions are stand ins for people like the, that's yeah. how I read them back in the day. And it's how I read them now. I mean, like if if they weren't stand ins for people, I don't think they would talk so much. You know, I actually a, um, a full yeah. silent book about them, which I think um, also could be compelling. I but, do have yeah. the, the page up on my phone of uh like the the care it it's a page called character sketches and it lays out like each character by and like their personality and it also explains exactly uh or it, for a lot of them it uh like right after this it explains like who they're supposed to represent right well because it's yeah. very clearly like what's the name of the is sana the older safa Safa with an F, with an F. Is, is the is the like grandmotherly sort of lion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So her and um and again I'm blanking on the younger lion's name. Noor uh, or Noor, Ali yeah. is the baby Ali. and Noor is yeah, the yeah, other. Noor's, Noor's yeah, mom. The, yeah, Safa and Noor have like a dialogue throughout this whole thing that's basically like you know order but safety versus you know freedom but <laughs> chaos, yeah. which is you know I mean when you when you put it in the context of you know. uh iraqi history like a lot of the reason that you know there there was a there was a large portion of the uh iraqi population that you know supported saddam hussein the hussein regime um largely because during the like during the iran iraq war hussein was like hussein was came to power before then but like a big part of it was that he you know was was crucial in you know winning that war or at least you know, preventing some of the more uh, horrid atrocities that uh, Iran was was doing, uh, especially in, in northern Iraq. If you want to get into the actual history, the U.S. is the reason that Iraq won that war um, and, and installed Saddam Hussein 
uh, as as the leader of Iraq. But like there there is a there was there are obviously people as you know in a lot of cases who lived through a traumatic experience like that. And then again, when Iraq was pummeled by sanctions after the Kuwait invasion in ninety one, and sort of have someone like Saddam Hussein leading you through leading the country through that, yeah, sort of for destabilizing sure. the country. You know, you understand the the popularity that a figure like that might have versus you know younger people who, you know, don't have that uh, that yeah. context and perspective, and and that's sort of how the the book read to me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's like the that's how I interpreted the dialogue going through, there. and that's what I meant when I said you know that's the the rape scene right at the beginning right is like that's to me I read that as like we can't actually talk about the Iran Iraq War, but that's the Iran Iraq War. Which was, yes. I mean, we're talking about like an event that you know not nearly as brutal as the U- U.S. invasion of Iraq, but still, like Iran was like sent like elite commandos into cities to kill indiscriminately and yeah. used gassed cities, like, and then mm-hmm. later the U.S. used white phosphorus in Fallujah, so very very similar tactics, you know. But you know, go at going through that, that's 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 how I interpreted the dynamic, there, mm-hmm. which is yeah, and, and, which is and, and, interesting that that may actually be more intentional than I than I. Maybe yeah, it, he yeah. he describes the flashback as uh, the plains of Kenya to uh, what life was like for Zill and Safa in the wild (parentheses) allegorically before Saddam came into power. Yeah, hmm, interesting. And so, I mean, we we kind of already touched on it, but and obviously the the choice to use a herd of lions as as the as the protagonist in this is like, hey, well, people like animals, right? Everyone likes animals, and it's easy to connect to. Which you know, looking at it now, is seems like a cop out. And like, hey, you you could tell this story with four humans, and it would you know, it, be more powerful. It in, unfortunately in, in... kind of plays into like the uh, ongoing trope of like we can tell stories about people of color, but they have to turn into an animal first. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Which is in its own way dehumanizing and, and racist. Yeah. Well, it's literally yeah, it dehumanizing. It yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like <laughs> definition there. Um, but so I, I guess we kind of talked about what we think about it now, but the decision of this, like, you know, coming out in 2006, what, what do you think about his decision to, to make them, you know, Pride of Lions? And then, um, you know, also it ties into a real, you know, at the end, it ties into a real news story where, where the U.S. soldier shot these four lions kind of thing. Had either yeah. of you heard of this? The, yeah. the true story? I had not, as yep. I said before. I, I knew about that, yeah. I'm not surprised that you knew. <laughs> yeah. I was just yeah, curious. I heard, about a few year, I heard about it a few years ago, but didn't connect it to the book at all, and then, like, read the book. And, like, when I, had like, picked it up a month ago, I knew that it was connected to it, but I, I'd heard about Pride of Baghdad for, like, probably a decade before I read it. I had definitely know. never heard of this book before you guys brought it up. Yeah. What, you weren't reading Playboy's Best of 2006 list? <laughs> I did. No, Let's go. I um, can't say I was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a very, like, like, th- that, that decision is, like, it's a very sort of, like, liberal media type decision, right? Of, like, you know, we, we feel really bad about what's, and this is, this is, you know, very, very typical of liberals and probably people like Brian K. Vaughn. Um, you know, in the period, like the post nine eleven, uh, you know, in a lot of cases until now period where, you know, they, you feel really bad about what's happening. Um, but you also buy into, uh, the prop, the like sort of, these are official state enemies line. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's sort of, that's the, it's, it still reads that way to me in a way that's like, you know, it's really bad what's happening to them, but I can't really i don't want to put like people in hijabs and dishdashes in this book because those are official state enemies you know we can't we can't do that yeah um it, and it's, like, it's it's a it's sort of an inherent contradiction and in, i think of a lot of like mainstream liberal ideology when it comes like specifically in america but but elsewhere as well um and you know, I think it's it's very palatable to an American audience because, again, like Emily said, they're they're animals. Everybody loves animals. You know, it's sad when a lion gets shot. Uh, you know, maybe less yeah. so. Like lions, you know, lion. Like the, the 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 interesting thing is that you know the lions aren't a statistic, right? Like everything else, like oh yeah, X number of people died. It's like, oh, but lions died. Like it's a. For, I mean, it, it was a news story for for yeah. a reason, right? Like that four lions get shot, and you know. I, there were 
you know, it, it probably got way more eyes on it than the one that's like, oh, like a bunch of people died too. You know, it's like, you know, there, there's a war, there's an invasion, but it's like, oh, the lion. Yeah, there's hurt. tears when there's a war like that. It's U.S. soldier casualties, animal casualties, <laughs> uh, official well, state enemy casualties. U.S. soldier animals. You got that's. The oh top. yeah, that's that's you, the you real to... like top top. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah, like yeah. if Yogi Bear got shot while in Baghdad. <laughs> oh boy. That's that's yeah. that's oof oof oof. Um, yeah, I mean, Alec Workley, even, like, when they go into Saddam's palace and yeah. encounter the bear that is literally, like, the way that I read that was like, oh, that's just supposed to be Saddam and that lion is the, the supposed to be the Iraqi people, which, you know, you, you can make, you can, like, it's these very obvious allegories, but if you're not, if you're not looking for them, you can sort of ignore it, and that leads you to places where you can sort of, like, digest almost more sinister like a more sinister form of, of, of state propaganda where like oh the bear is saying all these things about tyranny and they fucked him up and killed him and wasn't that awesome yeah um, yeah and, and it's, it's like well <laughs> it's really it, not i mean it's it, the same as like you know like they it, you, and you can't help it because at this point saddam had already been captured and and, and very publicly and very brutally killed like you, you can't help but draw the parallel there of like, oh, actually, this is awesome. Whereas, yeah, like, it's yeah. really not. <laughs> like, it's... it's... There, there's an interesting statement from Brian K. Vaughn's uh, own words about this. Uh, Thanks, Brian. He says, uh, the bear attacks our quartet in what promises to be one of the most spectacular fights in the history of our medium. So, like, even BKB knows that he is making this out to be, like, badass. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it definitely reads that way, right? Because, like, you know, they're, they're on this journey. Oh, it's a they... great scene. I'm not, I don't want to take that away from it. It's fucking no, cool. No, no, for sure. I mean, like, Nico, Nico Henderson, like, draw, draws the hell out of this this really cool animal fight. Mm -hmm. but, and, it, and then after that, I think it also sets up for a happy ending. Because it's, it's, it's the classic, like, they go on the journey. They, you know, you know they, they, there's the big conflict. And then they make it out. And then there's the sunrise. And then there's, like, boom, boom, the gunshots thing. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think in retrospect this book is not the n not the like fantastic piece that that you know i think if i read this back in the day it would have been and john luke you did read it back in the oh, day yeah. and, you know thought it was uh, when but i was I you think, know a liberal yeah <laughs> now you're our friend um but now it's a uh, you know I, I i still think that the the final pages where the lines are shot and the last words by you know the u.s soldiers are well, are like yeah, so that's the great thing about it. It's like, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a sad and affecting ending to see, you know, the protagonist killed in this way. Yeah. But, I, but I think that that's where the real point of the book is, is that like this whole time you have this running dialogue about like, you know, what future is better, you know, and like, you know, maybe we should keep the status quo. Maybe the status quo is better because it keeps us safe. Maybe the, this, we should, we need to try something new. And then it doesn't matter because at the end, you have no choice. You know, the crush, the crushing boot of, of empire steps on you and destroys you either way yeah. which is why i say you know the whole time i'm reading i'm like oh my god this is like really kind of gross like propagandizing of like it was good that we took out saddam hussein right yeah but then at the end it's like the the point that i think that is being made at the end is that like these are you know the dialogue that they're having these are discussions that are worth having and you know but the future should be in the hands of 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 the people, right? Like they should yeah. get to decide what their future is, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and 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 that's sort of and that, and that's why I think the sort of tongue in cheek, like at least they died free, brother, like like. But 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 I think of that as like a tongue in cheek. I mean, that's literally also like a thing that I think was in that news story. Um, but but that, but that I lions died free. Really? That that like when they put up the statement, they were like it was a tragedy, but you know they died free or whatever. Like they died free of because they got out of the zoo. Yeah, because they got out of the zoo. Yeah, oh. exactly. That's what they. Yeah, um, but but yeah. no. Like I I think that it's a very tongue in cheek line of like, yeah, you know they <laughs> they uh, they weren't able to to make those choices for themselves. They have the made for yeah. them. by well, and and, and there's so know. much dialogue in this book, and the, you know the lions talk a lot, which is you know we you talked about it before, but like clearly human analogs and all that without without doing yeah. that. Um, but for for all that talking, for all that, like it doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter yeah. what they do because because the U.S. fucking came in there and bombed it. Like, well, and that's like... the th yeah, that's the thing that salvages it is that like 
at the end of the day, they like you get this tongue in cheek line, but it's like they had at the end that they had their autonomy fully stripped from them. They yeah. had this whole future in front of them, looking over the the streets of Baghdad, able to just like to self actualize and, and decide yeah. their future, and it's immediately you know sort of taken away from them. Uh, which still, I think you could maybe read that as like you could maybe re- since they've already killed uh, Fajar the the bear, you could maybe read that as like oh now that the good old U.S. has swept in and taken out Saddam, the Iraqi people are free to make decisions for themselves, you know. But but I I don't actually think it's it's that I, think, I don't actually yeah. think it's that sinister. I, th- I think that genuinely it is supposed to to be allegorical for like them you know the ultimate irony is that they did not die free they yeah died you know less free than they were in the zoo at the end you know yeah and like um, even though saddam is like you know the, the, the saddam bear as it is is like it's this villain and everything it's like but you know the bear didn't even like it didn't kill them right <laughs> like yeah it, 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 it was the, the u.s came in and did that it took out it took out the chance for like anything so it's like mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it, it's 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 nice it's or you know it's it's maybe impressive or it's interesting because talk about why the last man we joked that we were reading that we're like that book does not hold up at all because i know you know back when it came out it was i think looked at this like very progressive like look look, look on a lot of things like trans people and it was like no like you, re- you read this today and you're like oh my god like, this, is, this is this is this is kind of this is kind of vile like you, you know the way they do it um and a lot of this is also like that but it Maybe because it's shorter too, and there isn't enough time for, you know, Brian Kivan to, to to really live in that era. But um, yeah, still a still still a nice poignant ending. Um, what 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 part of this book made you made you cry in the book club, uh, Emily? I mean, like definitely the ending. Like I was real sad. Like I did not expect them to just get like gunned down. So like that really took me by surprise. Like. I read this in basically two sittings. Like I, I read some of it before I went to bed, and then the next morning I woke up and read the rest of it before I ended up getting out of bed. And oh, yeah, it was just really, really sad at the end. Yeah, yeah. Sad ending. Did you like was that the part where you cried in the book club? I I think the thing the scene for me that I'd go with for that is the the scene with the turtle um talking about yeah. the I and mean, i mean there is there is something to be said for for that scene in particular uh you know that that there is something to be said for using you know animals and not necessarily using humans and you know telling a story that's a sort of about the externalities of of war and and human conflict and the very real effect that that does have on you know the the environment and the, and the ecosystems um, and, and I thought that that was like a very poignant moment that like the book is less inter- the book is way more interested in the metaphor than it is in like actually telling a story about how, you know, an invasion like this impacts, you know, the broader ecology and not like just humans and, and their and the societies that we build. Yeah. Um, but also the, 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 the ways that, you know, we destroy the environment when we, you know, drop bombs and, you know, burn buildings down and, you know. I mean, can't be good that you know we use depleted uranium in uh, in 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 in, in light, light rounds in in Iraq, you know things like that. Like, and I think that that is that is actually like a very good use of the of 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 the like sort of animal as as metaphor and stand in um, is when that turtle talks about uh, you know the sort of evils of humanity and how he experienced it with the oil with with the, with the oil the burning of the oil fields but how yeah. inevitably and inevitably we see that the lions experience it but also for years down the, for decades and years and years and years down the line you'll see that experienced by the ecology of mm-hmm. you know conflict area or like like yeah. conflict areas um, like so i think that, that was, was was very well like mm-hmm. very like very well a point that was very well made i think yeah, and I, I I can't believe I forgot about that part and called there only one flashback, but that's that's a very good scene. That as soon as you brought it up, I was like, oh yeah, that, yeah. that turtle. I mean, it is and it is a scene. It's sort of like you know, it it's a it's a character. It's I mean, and the, even that turtle is you know supposed to be a stand, probably supposed to be standing for a person like somebody who is sort of 
you know, above it all, has lived, has seen it all. You know, I lived through the Iran Iraq war. I lived through the invasion of Kuwait. I'll, I'll live, you know, everything sucks and I'll live through this too. You can, you can make that, you could, you can, that, that is a, a very like valid interpretation of reading of that scene as well. But uh, th- I think, you know, it is one of the most, if not, I think the most affecting scene in, in the book. Um, in, in how that's, that's told. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the horizon scene for sure. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a beautiful panel. I mean, just the way that it's yeah. colored and all the detail it's put into the, the buildings and everything. Um, and even yeah. the setup for it, I mean, this is classic, like comic stuff, right? The setup for it of like, <laughs> you, you have like all Ollie walking over and, and like saying something and everyone like hearing him shout and turning, like he, they think he's hurt. And then you turn the page and they all see like yeah. the beautiful, the beautiful city in front yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. And it's um, you know, you know it's, like, it's like a cross generational moment of of awe. Even though one of them yeah. can't see anything, right? But she's yeah. heard the description so many times from the yeah. other lion that she's like, yeah, I can see this shit. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful, it's a it's a beautiful moment. I think not like that moment specifically is a a beautiful moment, a, like a glimpse of a few, of a possible future that is, mm-hmm. you know very quickly taken like yeah. Yeah. taken away but yeah. still I, th- I i i do i do agree that that is a very uh very emotional yep. sort of moment yeah yeah yeah. do you think if this if this book was made in 2022 that they would just get rid of the lions and just just make it humans and it would you know no. not if it was published by dc comics yeah <laughs> well vertical's dead so i mean yeah but but I mean I mean there there are there like so it would be, but it would be published by DC. I mean DC still has like plenty of well not plenty but they do I mean, have comics can... that are outside of the sort of like licensed. It'd either be a black label or it'd be an image comic. I feel. I mean if you want to like Tom King wrote that fucking Sheriff of Babylon book a few years ago that was also about you know was also about Iraq. Um, I mean it's a very different book, but like that the. I, it, it is emblematic of the types of things that are still in the culture about the Iraq war. Sure. I mean, we're, we're at a point, like we're still at a point where like collectively, you know, we haven't, you know, we, we, we never moved on from Iraq really uh, culturally. I, I don't, I, I think there's like, you know, we have better language to talk about it. Now people are more sensitive in how they talk about, you know, Arabs and, and Muslims and and the region more broadly, but I think the same the same ideology that animates Pride of Baghdad still permeates through uh, American pop culture. And so I think I still don't think that you I, I, I don't think it would be as extreme. I don't think you would get run out of the comics industry for trying to make Iraqis sympathetic in twenty twenty two. You know, I think there's you know there's more tolerance than that, but definitely I, I, but I still don't, I still think that unless you're, you know, operating in a much different kind of, uh, like kind of context, it's very hard to write this story that has an ending that is critical ultimately of, of, of the U S empire, um, in, in, and have it published by DC comics. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're writing an image book, you know, maybe, I mean, you know, Alice Cott wrote has written stuff at Image that's that's very critical of U.S. foreign policy. Of other people have as well. So there's certainly room for it, but not at the scale of a DC Comics imprint. Yeah, I I mean I I honestly don't think that it. I like I still think they would use lions. Like I feel like this is even though this falls into the trap of dehumanizing. Uh, non-white people and and having their stories told through uh animal allegory i also think that that's just part of like the the point of this so i feel like it would still there would probably still be lions but they would i feel like the way that this goes about like there are certain aspects that would probably just be different like politically the way that that they are being Mm -hmm. examined in this i don't think that very much would be changed about like the basic structure of everything 
just like the the execution would probably have some pretty major differences i am not exactly yeah. qualified to say what i think those differences would be but no i, I actually think that's a good point it's I, very I, of I, its time yeah no that's a really good point i think I, I i'm not you know i was a little bit more hardcore in my in my response but i think emily's absolutely right that like there would be some degree like there would be additional like sensitivity readings probably you know like there would be more yeah. There would be more thought put into it. I think that you could maybe get away with something that isn't so. Like so maybe even bringing on like, like some sort of co-writer to yeah. to help make sure that. Uh, Who's not like a white guy. Yeah. 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 I, I Okay. I I was implying that it would not be a white guy as a co-writer for yeah. sure. I mean, Scott Snyder. That. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Scott yeah, Snyder sure. would be brought onto I, this I, book. You know, like the hooks, the hook, like that um you know i it, that got this thing made and all that is like hey these lions escaped from the zoo during the, the invasion like that's like that's what this book kind of is i mean it, it's more than that it is but that's like yeah i feel like, like if you sense, start to take away the lions you're just making a different book which is fine that can be yeah, a good book which, which definitely make that book but yeah, it's not yeah. it's not pride of baghdad and and you know that that's not to say that that's a good or bad thing it's just you know, yeah. you it's a ship of Theseus sort of thing. Like you're replacing all of the parts until it becomes an entirely different book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like we, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask you to finish your point. It's a separate thing. No, I, I was just going to say that like you can absolutely tell a story that is about these lions where they aren't, you know, stand-ins for for people, right? And, yeah. And Do you want to know what what story what BKB specifically about. says about? what everybody stands for i i, I am yeah, actually really curious I, I do want to know okay so um i'm curious how specific he gets like historically but uh hmm. zill is the benevolent opportunist uh who secretly prays that his impen that this impending cataclysm will free him from his cell although he pragmatically uh prepares for more of the same nor represents the reform-minded younger generation of Iraq, those who want to earn true democracy in their country. Safa represents those Iraqis who gladly pledged allegiance to Saddam in exchange for the relative safety and stability he helped create. And finally, Ali represents the innocent children of Iraq, those who those kids who had no opinion of Saddam, George W., or much of anything outside their families and friends before the war. It's wild that he thinks that Zill is Ahmad Chalabi. That is fucking insane. Uh, rather than have innocent Iraqi zookeepers stand in for Saddam, we'll have the zoo itself represent the dictatorial Hussein regime, much like pre-war Iraq was to its average hmm. citizens. Yeah. The zoo is an irrefutable prison for the animals who call it home. Okay, that's... Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely read it that way, but like, yeah, okay. There's maybe a little less self awareness than <laughs> not to, again, not to like excuse the Hussein regime. But well, and also it's it's worth noting that this is basically the pitch document. So, yeah. like, yeah. you got to talk to the people who are reading it. Yeah, I, you know, we have no way of knowing like if any of this was sort of maybe slightly tailored to be a little uh, easier to digest for yeah. people who were yeah. going to give him the monies to make this. And and not to excuse, like, you know, the way he's handled it, no. or, you know, even Wide Last Man, but, like, if you look at his work now and, like, the stuff that Saga does as well, it's, like, it's clear that he's he's matured as a person, which, I, great, great. Well, it's way, Saga is way more explicit in being anti-war. Mm -hmm. you know and, and having like an anti-war ideology whereas this is like not so much anti-war it's the john Kerry line of like well you know if i was in office i would invade iraq the right way <laughs> well, you know, yeah, like, it, i wouldn't waste so much taxpayer yeah. money getting and bogged down in an insurgency it, you know like it's it, it, it does feel that brian k bond uh, you know just reading his work you know over the course of 20 years has changed because i mean people yeah, do no and, and i think it's i think <laughs> that's that's a that's a really good point it, like, yeah it's probably like a, a twofold thing of mature, like increasing maturity and also like increasing freedom. Like he, you know, over the course yeah. of his career, developed the 
type of cachet in the comics industry that he could make statements like you know going back to what john was saying about him getting chased out of the comics industry like he has probably gotten to a point with saga where he's a big enough name in the oh. industry that you know yeah, he's not getting kicked out he, unless he's, he, like, I think he's not gonna be chased out with pitchforks for being I, anti-war i think if brian k vaughn wanted to write like a very like you know real sort of like brian de palma-esque story about uh you know about iraq and the way that like some like, like filmmakers like 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 De Palma have done like you know he could he could get away with that you know like he could yeah. like now he could I, I mean that's it's a testament to like how the industry works I guess but not not yeah. I'm not saying that like Brian K Vaughn should do that <laughs> like I, oh, to be yeah. clear like I, I don't think that it was good when Brian De Palma did it either but like you know it, there is a certain cachet that you build up. Uh, where you, you can do that. And yeah, like, yeah. I mean, Saga still is allegorical at the end of the day, but it mm-hmm. is much yeah. more... It has much more, I would say, much more moral principles. It's uh, taking a firmer it. stance. I haven't read yeah. a lot of Saga yet, uh, but that is definitely the the yeah. vibe I am getting and so far. Also, to be honest, I think thematically, like, like, like Saga is a story about, like, normal people during a, a galactic-wide civil war that, mm-hmm. you know, again, is, like, it is an imperial war. It's it's a war fought by, you know, a home planet against their moon. Um, but yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, it's about, like, the people that are affected by that and how, like, you know, no matter what you do, like, the war catches you. It destroys lives wherever it goes and wherever it touches. And I think at the end of the day, that is also the theme of thematically like what pride of baghdad is doing yeah it is just so pained in getting there it, it um, is that, yeah. it, that it that it that it that it obscures and, and obfuscates that like i think you could read like the problem is is i think you could genuinely and again like i i think you could genuinely read this and get to the end and not get that that last line is supposed to be tongue-in-cheek and i don't think that actually i don't think that actually detracts from you know the work or whatever like some people have are bad at doing critical analysis and you know that's their own problem but like writing it in a way that is more firm in its stance i think is yeah not a bad thing like i'm not (laughs) i i i i i like i this is you know very classic point that i've made a lot of times on you know the comics podcast but like you know the firmer your ideology is the better your comic book probably is as well right i don't know yeah, Matt Hawkins. Shouldn't be so terrified of letting, you know, stuff like that seep in. And, and even if it's, like, ideology I don't like. I mean, there's, like, Garth Ennis has written plenty of, like, totally depraved and sick comics that I that I absolutely love. And they're be- you like, can they say suck. Batman Reptilian. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, but Batman Reptilian would suck if it was, like, trying to tack to the middle, right? Like, it was just, like, yeah. Batman hunting down Killer Croc without the weird, like... I get, I get, I, my dick gets hard when I beat these criminals to death, you know, like it, it's more entertaining that way. Like it's a better story. And then I think, yeah. and I think that's true. Of, like, I think that like, that's true of so, like the themes in saga relative to, to, to pride of Baghdad. Yeah. But sorry, Emily, w- w- was there more that he said about like the, um, the yeah. representations or hold on. I, uh, closed, closed it. Well, I closed the app, but it's yeah. still like, I have it still oh, okay, pulled cool. up so I can just get back to, uh, because this is all in the the break there's like specific breakdowns of like the how the events are going to play out in each chapter and things in the comic from this outline pretty much stay the same like there's a couple of changes like the turtle that we talked about earlier is an owl in the original draft but like not much turtle is much better not much of that changes yeah with uh, the pollution there but um also, on the topic of the turtle, while you're looking that up, if yes. you guys, if if people haven't seen the Werner Herzog documentary um, about the Kuwaiti oil field fires, um, it is fantastic. Uh, I would I would highly recommend checking that out. Cool. Um, it's called Lessons of Darkness, mm-hmm. um, and it's and that, that's an event that is like I think what like like many uh events in in the history of the, the recent history of the middle east that is sort of like wiped from 
contemporary memory. Yeah, I've it's a very good documentary. Stuff, yeah. um, another uh, detail that's mentioned in here is the horses that, and I mean, you probably knew this, but the horses that they see are uh, deliberately like uh, horses that were abandoned by the Hussein family when yeah. Saddam went into hiding. Well, the oh, palace yeah. they go into is yeah, but it, palace. Yeah. yeah, I just meant that there's also that yeah. specific mention right. of those horses. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the zoo, and, and the book doesn't quite portray this, but that zoo is literally, like, was literally on the grounds of, like, Saddam Hussein's palace. Oh, like, yeah, I, like didn't, a, I didn't exactly like, realize you, that. You won't really get that from the book, but it is like a personal zoo. Like, it is in the that sort of compound. Oh, yeah. Because they kind of got, like, turned around, and it seems like they go, you know, they're in a jungle, and then... Well, the jungle is, like, I, I think that that's, like, very tightly controlled, like, zoo sort of, like, there's not a jungle in, in, a, in the middle of that, uh, um, so I think that that's, <laughs> I like... Know. No, 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 yeah. but, but, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, on the banks of the river, you can, you can, like, that's why the zoo is built there, you can build it on the banks sure. of the river and have more ecological diversity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Around well... There. We're getting we're getting to the end of this of this here show, um, but I, I want to ask both of you, um, you know, individually, and then maybe together if you'd like. But would you recommend this book to someone? And if, if you would recommend it, what would you say to them uh, in the recommendation? Starting with Jean Luc. I mean, yeah, I think I think I, w I, I don't I think I don't think I wouldn't recommend it to somebody. I think that you know, I, it's a it's like like again like I go back to this, but like. Nico Henriksen's work in this book is phenomenal. And I think if you're looking for something that is sort of a, a masterclass or not necessarily a masterclass, but like a, a, a good example of like, you know, the kinds of story, the type of storytelling you can do in comics, like Nico Henriksen does a fantastic job of that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, everything from like the, and does it with, with animals, you know, which, which is even, you know, that's one of the things that is more impressive than if they'd done, done, been done with humans. Cause you know, humans are, are more in tune with sort of body language and stuff of other humans, but you get a lot of like, you know, you get a lot of that, the sense of like what the, the animals in this book are feeling and, and in, in, in certain moments from his art. And I think that, you know, that is a, a really critical part of the, of the book. And, and it, and in that sense, like it's absolutely worth reading, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I also think that, you know, it's a, it's a compelling historical relic and it's, it's well written. I mean, I, I like, I, I I do enjoy, you know, divorced from the context, the dialogue that the, the dialogue between Noor and and Sana that, that Safa that happens throughout the book, like, you know, I, I, and I think it's something that like benefits fiction a lot of the time to like have these sort of like running ideological clashes and debates between your your main characters as the story unfolds and you know, folding in elements of the story that, 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 that happen and using that to like fuel the, their, their arguments with one another. Like that is like, it's really compelling. It, it only feels a little bit, you know, uh, gross, I guess, when you actually put it in, in context, but yeah. it, it is like a compelling, well-written story. I think I, I, I don't, I don't know that I would shirk. It's not like when I, when we tried to reread, and I mean, this wasn't for this show, but we, we, we've tried to reread why the last man and, and I think all of us were kind of immediately were like, this is, yeah, we don't re comic comic book people who are still recommending this should reread it and reevaluate their recommendations. You know, Pride of Baghdad isn't, isn't that. I would be interested in, cause the thing about this versus why the last man is that why the last man starts in 2002 ends in 2008 so pride of baghdad yeah. is like kind of in the middle there and i'm yeah. wondering if like i'm wondering how the like latter sections of why the last man hold up versus the ones yeah. that came out in 2002 because this at least shows like i mean i guess it's it's very different subject matter so like it's kind of not comparable but like i would be interested to see like how that progression went because but i, I would can't... definitely recommend this over why the last man if, oh, if sure. i had to I, I would say that it actually is fairly comparable i mean why the last man is like along with ex machina uh sort of like oh, yeah ex machina Vaughn's... was also around the same time yeah mm -hmm. it's it's sort of brian k vaughn's version of what the entire comic book industry did which was you know, writing trauma comics about 9-11. Um, 
Um, and this is, um, you know, the, and that was like the peak of sort of, you know, of like anti-Arab sentiments and really like violent, and, and along with that other like really violent reactionary sentiments. I mean, you know, the, it, it all sort of, at the end of the day, all sort of goes together. Whereas, you know, by the time Pride of Baghdad comes out, you're already starting to see like, uh, you know, support for the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan dropping. Um, not always for like, do, like a lot of the time in the U.S. it's dropping because people are tired of their kids coming home in body bags. But you know, the the su- support is dropping, and so this is. I think that they are interesting pieces to to read in that context of like. Oh yeah, one sure. Of these things came out like right yeah. after, and one is a few years later, and you can already see the sort of shift in you know, what is being written about. I, well, when like, I said they weren't comparable, I was thinking more just on, like, the... just the difference in the political... the socio-political issues that they're tackling. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. I feel like Why the Last Man and... like, I feel like trying to, to tackle gender stuff versus, like, war stuff, like, what? there are very different... A, a why the last man there? does have it yeah, does have some more stuff that's fair it does have some pretty anti-arab stuff in yeah it. Not, like to the same you know it's not yeah. about that as much but yeah there's definitely some of that in there yeah you know i um had tried to kind of block that out a little bit from our, our yeah. reread so um i didn't take that into consideration when i said that uh so yeah that actually there is an interesting intertextuality there yeah and then you bring it obviously forward. We talked about Saga, you know. Like, yeah, I I would stuff. probably rec like I. It would depend on the context, but I would not hesitate to recommend Pride of Baghdad to someone if I felt like it was an appropriate recommendation. Like, sure. I wouldn't just think- recommend it to like any random person, but like yeah. you know, uh, someone with like a a good grasp of like media literacy and like the way that that, Im- <laughs> okay. That sounds bad. That's not how no, I, no, it, I but... no, but I, I agree with you. I, you're not recommending this to, you know, I'm not some... recommending this to some guy I run into at my lo- Well, I was going to say at my local comic shop, I actually don't have a local comic book shop anymore. All of the ones in my town have closed down since the pandemic are yeah. the, uh, the new purveyor of comic books in my town is a textbook store that supplies uh, people getting textbooks for the local university. <laughs> they they have a big sign out front now that says, we have comics and manga. Yeah. I'm very, I'm, like, I'm really curious about that, but it's so we, unrelated We can, we can absolutely now. talk about that later. <laughs> Check out our Patreon exclusive. Yeah, check out our there. Patreon exclusive content where I tell John Luke about textbook brokers. That's the name bad. of the. Yeah. That's the name of the store. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say like, <laughs> not like I, a, that's no, not like a job. That's the name of the store. Worked, so. um, uh, yeah. To get I back to say, the recommendation thing. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah I, I would probably recommend this to somebody, but it would be very contextually dependent on who I was talking to. Right. Like I think if somebody was like, "Oh, you read comics." I, you know, watched Why the Last Man, the TV show, and heard that it was written by a guy called Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, are there any Brian K. Vaughn books you would recommend? You know, Pride of Baghdad wouldn't top that list. If somebody was like, should I read Pride of Baghdad? I'd say, you know, there's better Brian K. Vaughn stuff to read. I, I mean, I think... If somebody was just looking for recommendations, it wouldn't be the first thing on my mind. Yeah. But, you know, it's something that, like, if people were... If somebody was like... you know, If this, someone yeah, wanted to know about the state of comics during the Iraq war, <laughs> I might point them in this direction. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. That, even yeah, if they're it. like, uh, even if they're like, hey, you know, I saw Wide Last Man TV show, Brian K. Vaughn, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, it, it's th- the reason I'd recommend. It's a short read, kind of thing, and I'm yeah, not going to re- read Very all the Very easy breezy. Thing, but I feel like I would definitely put a disclaimer ahead of it. Like I would, I you know, would, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think Paper like, Girls like, is like, what I'd go to probably for Brian K. Vaughn Rex. It's just more palatable, I think, even than Saga. Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. Like you read the first first trade of them, mm-hmm. but but yeah. Um, do you guys hear that sound? That is the doomsday clock. Wait, hold on, Dang. hold on, Alex, Alex, say that again. Yeah. 
Do you hear that sound? That's right. That's the doomsday clock. I thought we said we weren't going to play that. I know, but I couldn't help it. I kind of like that the doomsday clock is just a flip Angelico Cat song. I don't know. Maybe it's too deep in the weeds. But either way, that is the Doomsday Clock saying it's time for our first ever inaugural freshman cry space. And this is the part of the show where we highlight one thing that made us cry this week. Anybody anybody feel like like going first here or sh- should I, I just I can go first. Just... All right, Emily, take it. Take um it. one of my one of my cartoons ended uh last week and I cried about that. Uh Disney TVA's uh Amphibia uh, had its last season and its its season finale uh, last Saturday, and I did actually. This is not this is not me exaggerating. I did cry real tears uh, over frogs and humans. Wow, I, I I've been learning about amphibia. It's good. I mean, I don't think you would like it, no. but it's good. <laughs> I've, I've, I should say I've been learning about the discourse around Amphibia. The Is there discourse? discourse? Do you not know anything about the adult-coded frog? Oh, no, I do. <laughs> okay, never mind. I do know about the adult-coded frog. I, 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 that, somebody retweeted something, I thought... and I don't think... It wasn't you, no. but somebody retweeted something into my timeline that contained the phrase adult-coded frog. And I lost my shit and like started. I may have like, liked a tweet that involved adult coded frogs, but I've not uh, uh, retweeted I, anything about all that. I, I went down a rabbit hole of you know some of the most psychotic people. It on is the tr- it is truly psychotic. And the funniest thing is, uh, my reaction to finding out about that whole incident was to go follow the artist involved on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, this chick seems like, she seems funny. I'm going to follow her on Twitter. Uh, But yeah, I did. I cried. I thought when you said discourse, I thought there had maybe been some sort of discourse about the finale. Uh, But no, no, no. no, uh, but the finale was really good. It made me cry. So that's my cry space. Well, you know what? I'm glad there's good animation that is, that is hard to part from because it's. It's It's true. I mean, like it was like all bangers, basically. Like I would, I would not say that I thought there were any bad episodes. So. Like, yeah, nice. Yeah, Jean Luc, you go next. All right, uh, my cat's still dead. <laughs> so that's the, that's where we're at here. Uh, been trying some things. Won't won't get into that. Uh, but trying, uh, trying some things. <laughs> but uh, um, Are you experimenting with dogs. My sad, moment, my sad moment of this week is uh, is uh, is something that uh, I, I said goodbye to. Uh, after after around two years, and that is the roller coaster tycoon social. I media. thought you were gonna say your cat again. <laughs> <laughs> now that was twenty years, but please wow. stop bringing up my dead cat. Like, geez, <laughs> I'm sorry that I brought this up again. I don't know it's what okay, I was Emily. thinking. Uh, yeah, but I'm no wow. longer That's no longer doing doing roller coaster tycoon stuff. Uh, yeah, it was. You know, it was it, the first year was me energized and excited and making content, and then it kind of fell by the wayside, and uh, it stopped not because of. Uh, not because of you know bad content reasons, but because they're like, yeah, budget reasons. We're just not gonna run the account right now. So uh, it's on hiatus. Might not come back. Oh, Chad's but, gonna be uh, so disappointed. But I but I like my time with with the roller coaster tycoon, and it it's time to move on. Yeah. Now if we can have two minutes of silence, then we'll have Jean Luc's cry space. And we're back, Jean Luc. Uh, yeah, my cry space is also about something that it, that was lost. Oh no! Um, is it the white hot ra- ranch nacho fries? No, Those oh. are still there. <laughs> no, not at my Taco Bell. Oh really? Yeah, I mean, maybe gone here now too. I had one over the weekend, but maybe it's uh, no. Maybe mine that was my mine were weekend. gone before the weekend. I tried to get some, and they were out. I think they're just like some some places still have them. Some are yeah, it's probably are still phasing them out as supplies last. Yeah. So. Uh, no, it's uh, Master Chief's virginity. <laughs> your bull cell king. My bull cell king. They wow. took away my representation. And look, first, this week is a bad time for representation for Jean Luc. First, they take away Master Chief's virginity. And they yeah. cuck Cortana while doing it. That part's funny. But 
<laughs> the rest of it is awful. And second, they made Gerard Way lose two hundred pounds, and that now there's no there's Does no Gerard Way there's two hundred no... pounds to lose. Hey, that's not what that's not how much weight he probably lost. Um, look like oh, it's probably less than that. yeah. Def- I'm exaggerating for comedic effect. Yeah, but that's why I left. <laughs> they. <laughs> They, they they took away my badass Volcel role model, and they took away my uh, schlubby comic rock, book role model. <laughs> my popular rock star who looks like he's just eaten an extra large pizza and spent the whole night playing Magic the Gathering online. So you know what? It's uh it's unfortunate, but wow. such is my life. He can he can get his virginity back. He can. He still has if, there, if there's anything that I learned uh, growing up in the South, uh, it's that you can you can get your virginity back. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's, that's the main teachings of the Southern. That's the United extent States. of my sex ed. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I, I think if you just uh, that's more than I had. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I had. Well, yeah. Yeah. That might explain some things. I just hear that if you, you perform, I, I just I, I thought that I would be know. funny to say. Not that doesn't really mean well any. Just... All right, that all right, does not mean lag. anything. All right. uh, we 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 at uh, crying the book club uh, sometimes draw lines, and we sometimes draw Twitter profiles and, and plugs of different shapes. Sometimes they go on the ISIS flag. I don't make the rules. I don't know, but the point is, I still can't believe someone did. Fall <laughs> Uh, well, I can't uh, tell if somebody thought that was funny or if it was like someone trying to sabotage. I, I like to believe that someone thought they were being funny. It was like the only one of those at the event, so like it was clearly just like some sort of laugh. Yeah. Hmm. Someone well, with a bad I'm sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Irony poison. What a real <laughs> ISIS flag. Yeah, that, yeah, that'll show him. <laughs> that's that's all the time we're gonna we're gonna wrap up there before we uh no, before we before we go flag collecting. But before we do, Jean Luc, you're correct. We have some plugs that we are gonna some gonna what out. some plugs. Okay, plugs. Uh, first of all, if you're listening to this episode, uh, I got some news for you because Twitter.com at Cry and Book Club has some tweets, maybe some clips, maybe some shared memes. Maybe you'll see the butt plug flag maybe we'll share that maybe we won't i don't know we haven't talked about it um but check it out and uh, you know wherever you're at rate and review us five stars if you're listening to us on the radio shout it five stars if you're if you're walking down the street five stars and uh yeah if, all podcasts, if you five leave stars. us a five star review and tell us something that uh, tell us about something that made you cry maybe we'll read it on the podcast I like that. Yeah, make your review about something that made you cry, and it'll 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 get here. Although if it's our show that made you cry, that's not very nice. Yeah, keep nice. that to yourself. And I don't. Yeah, I don't need unless that. it's a good one. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Well, unless I reminded right. you two months after it happened that Master Chief lost his virginity and it made you feel <laughs> all sad inside again, like it does. Wait, me. we're recording this at Christmas. How do you know about Master Chief's virginity? <laughs> I know. I, I, we're recording I, this at Christmas, twenty twenty two. Uh, time travel is an interesting thing. You know what else is an interesting thing? Jean Luc's Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. That's right. At Mountain Dew Liker. Uh, yeah, Emily wouldn't say that. Let me look at my Twitter notifications really quick. <laughs> uh, does. You can find see. his litter box, JL Bot Bill. Uh, oh, be interesting. What is this from today? Aunt Pandanata liked six of your tweets. Yeah, we were having a conversation. No, yeah, but those aren't the tweets that you like. Oh, it's interesting well. that you would say it's not an interesting Twitter account yet. You know. Show your support by clicking the little heart button. Uh, you can find me at Alex Anziak on Twitter. I like to see the and... button light up. <laughs> Emily, <laughs> I, you know, I'll be shouting on Twitter. So Emily is at Mpendanata. I sure am. And also, Emily liked one of my tweets today. I did. So you tweeted today? Well, it was a reply to Chad. Oh, okay. You know, our our exiled co-host. We didn't mention Chad this time. You know, bits. Well, I'll add, we'll add it in in editing. It's fine. You'll hear some you'll hear some Chad stuff. Um, but yes. Letterbox, Pandabore, Twitch, Pandabore. You just finished Ace Attorney. Everybody. No, I haven't finished it yet. Um, I may it may be finished by the time this comes out. It but, will be. Uh, I believe in you. I yeah, I've been playing through the first Ace Attorney game. My plan is to play through all three, so I will probably still be doing that by the time this is up. It's such a great series. It's very it's so fun. fun. I'm having a great time. 
Yeah. And if if I had to miss another show, episode. You, you this time to play Danganronpa, which is a way worse version than the last time I missed an episode. But... It's a fun word to say, though. Uh, and, you know, if you listen to this podcast and you're like, you know, I don't like Alex's voice, I don't like Jean-Luc's voice, but I like Emily's voice, you're in luck because Emily's got a lot of podcasts. Uh, oh, I sure do, buddy. What are, what are they, Emily? Um, I have... Crying in the Book Club. Yeah, Crying in the Book Club, <laughs> the podcast yeah. I'm listening to right now. I also have Imagine Me and Utena, the Fresh Podcast Market, and that looks terrible. Wowzers. Mm-hmm. Wowzers, wowzers. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for celebrating Pride of Baghdad with us. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for crying in the book club. Next week, do are we announcing that? Uh, now that's another thing that made me cry this week, is that I sat down and read uh, next week's book, or next episode's book pick, uh, almost all in one sitting before we recorded this. Uh, I did not intend to do that, but well, someone you know, hasn't. Tell the people it, what exciting. it is. Yeah, it's, uh, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. I thought it was Laura Dern, and it was about the actress. This is going to be very different than what. Okay. Both hot, but no. All right, exciting. That'll that'll be our fourth episode. Yeah. Um, and then our fifth episode is the one. Ooh. Come back for that one. Come back for that one. Come back for them all. Um, but uh, I was at the Lego store today, and I got a Kermit the Frog. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I was just gonna. <laughs> <laughs>